And now we have 15 minutes and we can basically answer any question you might have. Um, there's, a, there's a good question about data storage of this, like, uh, so it's, is it like, do you usually keep the important files on your workstation or laptop and do you trans then have to transfer them to Triton and do the calculations there and then transfer like the results back and forth? Like, that's usually how it happens. But once you like give the ring finger, then like it's usually you, you turn out turn turns out that you move more and more of your work to these clusters. Like that's usually what happens. Like once you become more accustomed with the system, you usually can start doing more and more stuff in the cluster itself. So you need to do less stuff on your own machine. So on mm -hmm. my, for example, on my laptop uh, personally, like I. Every now and then, I just erase my whole laptop, uh, and like I, the most important things for my laptop are my configuration settings that are in version control myself. Mm -hmm. But everything else, I have it in in the cluster basically. Like I don't, uh, and if it's important, okay. it's in version control usually. And, uh, mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. usually like have to do anything with my laptop. Yeah. Because if it's on my laptop, I usually think that it's it's bound to like if you if you uh, like um, have a glass of water and by mistake, well, this is a ghost a glass of water, but if you have a, a <laughs> glass of water and you uh, by mistake pour it over your laptop and your PhD or something was in the laptop and that was the only place mm -hmm. you had it there, that's not a good idea. So so it's usually a good idea to mm -hmm. have the least important place to be your workstation mm -hmm. or laptop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Modules. Applications. Yeah. I mean, how many days do you think data storage is worth talking about? Like, I, have a re I really feel this could easily be a whole day talking about the options, best practices, things like that. Yeah, it it could be yeah. a whole day, but at the same time, like like talking about yeah. something is quite boring. So yeah. I hope that the I mean, start of the day we, when we did, or the middle of the day when we did a lot of these hands-on things, I hope that was uh, helpful for you, because like it's it's like this is important. Like like a lot of your work will involve like how do I manage this like my workload? How do I manage my folders? Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. How do I like transfer stuff? Yeah, and this, yeah this workflow like, things. Mm -hmm. That that's actually like a big part of your work yeah. day, uh, but that's not fun. <laughs> that's not yeah yeah. That's not why we are mm -hmm. here. We are mm -hmm. here for the computation. We want to run the stuff. We don't want to yeah like. But that's actually what like people use a lot lot of yeah. time yeah. Uh, doing. And actually, this is a good point. So like when you're doing your courses and stuff like that, you have an assignment. You do it. It's done. You move on to the next thing. So projects don't last long enough for them to get really messy and need lots of organization and stuff like that. But once you start getting on the cluster, the things you start now, you might still be using some of that data and some of that code for or five or 10 years from now. And that's a whole other level of challenge where there's almost no preparation. So, and, yeah. And, and like you will always learn be better practices. Like after you have done something, like like everybody has encountered that, that they, like when you when you do something, uh, then you, when you like forget about it, you you come back like two years after the fact, and then you look at your own code, your own practices, like what sort of yeah. things you did. Like they will look completely horrible. And and it's good. That's good thing because then you know that okay, you have moved forwards, and and that is good to remind remind yourself. So of course, the most important part is that you get stuff done, but yeah. you will also improve, or you can also improve, at, mm -hmm. and you should because uh, that's that enables you to do more. And this is all about the course. Like, in order to do more, you need to learn new practices, new things to do that yeah. you can do and then when you use those things you become even better at doing them and then you can mm -hmm. do even more yeah uh 
there's a question all the way from the start of the day. Um, maybe a naive question, but what I'm hoping to do is transfer my R workflow to the cluster for speed parallelization of tasks. I see it's possible to run R Studio on the cluster for University of Helsinki. What would be nice in terms of which would be nice in terms of familiarity? Would a demo of how to do this be possible? Um, hmm. We don't have R Studio installed on our cluster, and in we fact, have it on the OOD, but on open on demand. Hmm. Yeah, but like 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 this is a philosophical yeah. question, but I I would say that. Like I agree that R Studio is is a great idea and it's a great place to code R code, but yeah. the thing is that like if you want to move past the one R Studio, you you mm -hmm. need to take like the leap of faith that that at some point yeah. we need to like like nobody wants to use command line, but at some point it's well... it's basic. Well, okay, yeah, there's okay. some people yeah. that really like mean... to use command line, the, but. The... Yeah, a, you, you a year get... from now, half of y'all will want to be using it. <laughs> yeah, but but the thing yeah. is that why these tools are uh, created su in such a way is, is because of the possibility that can be achieved by this. Because like you cannot run R Studio, or basically you can buy like fifty laptops and run R Studio on all of them. But like that's an insane amount of work to like set them up and and like run the code in all of them. And if you, if you are willing to like press the shift enter or whatever in all of the IDEs, then of course you can like do it. But at, at a certain point, it becomes much yeah. more efficient to code it up and make it into yeah. scripts. So mm -hmm. to convert the R Studio stuff into R scripts and then use yeah. R and R script to mm -hmm. run it mm -hmm. on the cluster, because then you don't have to like uh, be there watching it. Exactly, yeah. And I mean, you can use R script to do the initial development when you're running it on the cluster many times, then you've copied the files there or mounted them from the cluster. And you are um, like, you're running it from the command line there. And that's probably the balance that I'd be suggesting. Oh, let's see, any new questions? want to run a program different Python modules, should I install them? So there's a thing you can read here about installing extra Python modules. So we haven't gone into this in detail, but usually it would be making a new virtual environment or Conda environment, which is like a self-contained box that has everything there. So it gets Python from outside, but then everything's in the box and you can install whatever you need there. And basically it's your choice in your work directory, in your home directory, if it's not too big, these kind of things. Um, yeah. In the feedback, I really don't believe this feedback. Someone has to think that it's too fast or too slow. Okay. Well, some yeah, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I agree that like uh, uh, some of the theory might be too slow and and the exercise is too fast. Yeah, I completely agree. I I think the problem is that this kind of like uh, dual like how could I say it? like it's a it's a double edged sword that like mm -hmm. at the same time uh, like the exercises. Yeah, like I I think we probably need to spend up more much more time in the exercises but it's it's very yeah. hard to find like the problem is that it's very hard to get exercises that explain the concepts well mm -hmm. and that we we try very hard to figure them out but basically like because it's it's very hard to get the grasp of of like okay now i'm here i'm on the login node i, I well, actually i'm in my office i'm looking at my laptop and in my laptop yeah. i have a small screen and that small screen is now on some some random different machine like in a different mm -hmm. system. And then I, I write this file and then I write the command and now suddenly it runs in a different system. And then yeah. I get like output and then I like read it in. It's very hard to yeah. get a grasp uh, of that. And uh, yeah, it, uh, or to get exercises that try to demonstrate the whole complexity of the system. 
uh, it's mm -hmm. like this kind of like you know the idea of uh, blind men feeling up a ho uh, an elephant and one person says that it's a, it's a free trunk when they are examining mm -hmm. the leg and, mm -hmm. and somebody says that it's it's a like a yeah something else so it's yeah. it's it's very hard to get like examples that explain the whole complexity of the system and that's why we sometimes get a bit wordy like yeah. this answer yeah. itself and it's super hard to make exercises that work for everyone like a lot of the advanced things would work only on one cluster or many of the data access things would work only on one operating system and would need site adjusting for other things and I mean, there's been other days when we've done the data storage and copying first, and it ends up taking half the day, and still it's not really useful. So my philosophy of this course, we've shown you the basics. Come to our garage, and we'll help you make it work for you for anything that we're not doing here. And... Yeah, the problem with the data storage and stuff like that is that, like, it suddenly becomes like there's only one way of submitting a job, right? There's only one way of submitting mm -hmm. like a serial job. You use SBAS to do it. And it's it's mm -hmm. quite easy to say like what sort of access you need to have. But when it comes to like file transfer, it it depends a lot on your workflow. So so what sort of work are you doing? What sort of like what operating system are you use? What way of uh like what uh, do you use terminal a lot maybe as i said fs is, is good for you in that sense if you're using a lot of graphical applications maybe you want to use the uh the the samba mounts you suddenly become it mm -hmm. becomes a lot murkier what is the recommended way and unfortunately yeah it becomes also like we don't want to pick favorites that much <laughs> like which which one is the is the way we want everybody to use because everybody has their own way of working and their own preferred methods and when it mm -hmm. comes to these file transfers for example and that sort of things it, it becomes a lot harder to say one definite answer yeah yeah uh are there any questions about the actual topics of today Maybe at the end of tomorrow, we can try to do some of these real full examples again and show the loading of the modules and stuff like that. Or is there any quick example we could do now? Do you want to do a quick demonstration of making a Conda environment and installing something? Or should we call it a day? We actually have other videos that go over this kind of stuff that we can link. Um. Well, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I I can do it. Like, like, okay. like yeah, and, sure. And, and I would say that, like, if if uh, if I would do this, um, if you want to share the screen. Oh yes. So to so, yeah. see more screen. There we go. So, so the way of doing the content environment, like, I'm not going to show you just like like out of memory because of course I, I remember I wrote the instruction but, but mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the better way is, is to show like okay where do you find the information so so Triton cluster we're here and then over here in the applications uh, we have environments yeah. with Conda so let's see the first time setup mm -hmm. so I haven't I've uh, removed all of my settings so I whoops Again, the zoom. <laughs> but this is the worst, the hardest part of this call. Um, yeah, so I haven't done this first time setup because I removed all of my settings. So I'll, I'll first check that I, I have a module loaded. So I'll restore this. So let's do this. So I'll just. So it says here that by default it installs. Uh, packages and environments in my home directory and I want to put them into my work directory so I I run these commands well these probably say that these folders might already mm. exist but let's say no okay and let's I'm all set to create my first environment so let's use this one so you're so making here. an environment file so yes. what Simo is doing instead of making it and installing stuff ad hoc we're going to make a text file that defines everything. Yeah. So that way we can delete it and make it again when needed. Yes. 
and we that's can specify really important. where we get the packages. Uh, so we use this open source Conda Forge repository, and we install NumPy and Pandas. So then we can actually create it. Okay, so now you're making it from environment normal. Where does yeah. it save the environment? Uh, now it saves it into the work directory because I run this mm -hmm. these commands okay. that make it. But again, like it it depends on the cluster. So for example, in CSC cluster, I would go to the CSC documentation and check the Tuku tool that they recommend in the mm -hmm. chat as well. Mm -hmm. So because uh, like not everything as is applicable for every cluster. Yeah. And uh, also, if I if I would be like uh, like uh, how could I say it? If I if I cheat a bit, I could <laughs> check here that below it says that uh, maybe I should maybe we should do this uh, by default because I haven't used Conda for years. So so there's this tool called Mamba which does these installations a lot faster. So I'll mm -hmm. I'll actually like cheat a bit because this will take a while to to solve this environment. So I'll I'll cancel this, and instead of using Conda, I will just use Mamba because this will take forever to create. <laughs> yeah, I mean and, I guess Mamba, people Mamba watching Mamba probably this, can't yeah. follow this at all right now. We're yeah. going so fast. Yeah, unfortunately. Ah, uh, yeah. Maybe we should call it a day. Now it's after four. So, yeah. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't have done this. I mean, this is just yeah, too this fast. Is not some, yeah, too... yeah. But okay. The point point is that there's there's way too much information in this course than the, already, and there's way too much information when it comes to like uh, these kinds of systems because they're complicated. And mm -hmm. it's you if you take one step at a time, and you uh, contact us and read the documentation. Mm -hmm. That's usually like a good way of yeah uh, getting there yeah i will post a link to a video of a past year where one of the special topics we gave on day one was using python environments with conda no wait this is good <laughs> okay um but yeah i think we're all really tired by now and it's my cat's feeding time so my ability to do much else is really limited. Um, so let's call it a day and hopefully see you tomorrow. And tomorrow we start running on multiple processors in many different ways. So it's really what we came for. So make sure you come. OK, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks a lot. See you later. Bye. Bye.